Metal Jesus here, and I'm back with part two of my series of forgotten first person shooter games. And in the previous episode, talked about some of my favorites, including the Thief series, I had Sin in there, I had No One Lives Forever, a lot of great first person shooters. We're gonna continue that trend with this video. I hope you're gonna like it because there's some classics in here. And for whatever reason, they have been forgotten. Whether, maybe they didn't sell very well, or maybe the developer just went out of business. But either way, today, they are remembered. Let's take a look. So the first game I wanna talk about is a fan favorite, especially if you own this game back in the late 90s, and that is Blood, and that was developed by 3D Realms and Monolith. This game was released in 1997, and it uses an enhanced version of the build engine. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the engine that powered Duke Nukem 3D and another forgotten little gem called Shadow Warrior. Now, one of the reasons why this game stands out is because it's it's sort of an over-the-top 80s slasher flick, if you can imagine that. It's just completely gory, very silly, and lots of fun. You play this game as a resurrected gunslinger named Caleb, and he comes from the 1800s, basically the Wild West, and he's on a quest for revenge against his former master, the leader of a cult called the Cabal. Now, I mentioned that this game has lots of gore, and that certainly comes out with the weapon selection that you get in this game, including a pitchfork at the very beginning of the game. Always fun, lots of good times there. And a flare gun is another great example of just shooting and lighting dudes on fire. This is a really fun, over-the-top game, and uh, it was followed up with a sequel called Blood to the Chosen. And then the series just kind of died. It just kind of faded away. Monolith went on to make other great games, but we'll get to those in a bit. In 2004, Namco surprised a lot of people by announcing that they were going to release a game that was a first-person shooter, but it was going to be exclusive to the original Xbox called Breakdown. Now, what really set this game apart at the time is that Namco was going for something different in the genre. They were going for a really high level of emergence and deep storytelling within the first-person perspective. Now, what I mean by that is that this game attempts to never take you out of the first-person view even when doing kind of mundane things that you do in a lot of other games. For instance, in most first person games, if you have to pick up ammo, you just sort of roll right over it and you just automatically pick it up. In this game, you actually have to look down. Same thing with using cards on doors and just about everything else you do, whether it's eating food and more. In addition to shooting, this game also includes a fairly robust hand-to-hand -hand fighting system. And again, it never takes you out of first person view and you can do things like dodges, rolls, blocks, even flips. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. And again, never go into third person mode. So it's sort of unique. And uh, you know, this game's not perfect. Um, sometimes it's kind of awkward, but it's definitely unique and certainly forgotten. Zombie? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm aware of that. Ah, yes. Now we've come to one of my favorite games of all time, and that is the third game in the Time Splitters series, and that is called Future Perfect. This game was released in 2005 for the PlayStation 2, the original Xbox, and the GameCube. And it's fantastic. The basic premise of the Time Splitter games is that every single level is a different time. Now, what stitches all this together is that you play as this character called Cortez, and he's kind of a Vin Diesel looking dude, and he basically hops through time, and he's trying to prevent this alien race of Time Splitters from ever being created. And in the process, he runs into himself, he runs into younger and older versions of his main enemy, and just so much more. In addition to that, this game is actually often hilarious. It's it's just so much fun. Hand them over. Hey, hand what over? The time device, the crystals. 
What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me, Crow. I know everything. I know you used the time device to travel back to 1994 and tell your younger self to carry on your twisted genetic experiments using the power of the time crystals. Really? Really? Well, uh, yeah. Hmm, and exactly where do I get this time device? So this game and also the previous game is just fantastic. I mean, I've played these games to death and it's just kind of weird why they've been forgotten. I mean, I don't know what the problem is, but occasionally you'll hear about maybe, you know, they're gonna release a fourth one. I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it, but if they do, that's a day one purchase for me. And now we come to a game that I only recently played for the very first time, and I'm kind of kicking myself because it is so killer. And that's a game called Strife. This game was released in 1996, and it was developed by Rogue Entertainment and published by Velocity. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, uh, this game looks like a lot of other games from you know the mid 90s, but that's because this is based on the original Doom engine by id Software. However, do not be deceived. This game is actually really cool because it adds a really strong story element to it. But more than that, there's a lot of role playing elements to this game too. For instance, there's a lot of characters throughout the levels that you can just walk up and have conversations with. And some of them will even have full portraits on the screen and voice acting. But in addition to that, there's also item shops, weapon shops, uh, people who will heal you. It, you know, there's gun ranges. There's all sorts of really cool RPG elements to this. Welcome to the last flicker of hope. Only we have the free will to oppose the order. We have the sharpest scientific minds and many able bodies, but we lack that one real uh, problem solver who will give us the edge we need. Another element that makes this game very RPG-like is that there are multiple endings depending on how you choose to solve the game. It's actually pretty interesting and it has a good and a bad ending. So it's worth replaying again. So I don't know what it is with this game. I don't know why it took me so long to finally play it, but it's pretty cool. And if you're an old school shooter fan like me, you should definitely check out Strife. Developer Criterion Games is mostly known for racing games. Some of my favorites like the Burnout series and also more recently they've taken on the Need for Speed series. But back in 2006, they made a first person shooter called Black for the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. Criterion's goal for Black was pretty ambitious. They actually set out to create the ultimate first person shooter and they even dubbed it Gun Porn. This game had massive levels with no load screens whatsoever, destructible environments, tons and tons of enemies, realistic sound effects, and so much more. As a matter of fact, this game actually won a bunch of awards just for the sound effects alone. It was, it was pretty ambitious for the time. I would say, however, that the reason why this game is a bit forgotten is because I think the story and the environments were a bit forgettable. As awesome as the game engine was and some of the, the specific elements of it, because the shooting's really satisfying in this game, but it's pretty forgettable. It, it's very typical of those modern shooters where it takes place in Russia or some sort of war-torn area. And I don't know, it just didn't quite live up to the hype. Uh, the other thing too that really bugs me about this game is that the enemies are often bullet sponges. I mean, they just seem to take, you know, hundreds of bullets just to take them down. That said, this game is really fun and it's often, you know, you can often find it for just a couple bucks. So I don't know. I don't know if they'll ever make a sequel to it. I think they could and improve upon it, you know, quite a bit, but we'll have to see. Intel says this bird's been abandoned for 50 years. You know what they say about military intelligence? So keep your head on a swivel. Spartan team, maintain present speed and heading. Copy that, Titan 1. You see that? 
Here's a bit more modern game that for whatever reason, a lot of people have not picked up and played. And that is a real shame because this game is actually really well made. It's called Singularity. It was created by Raven Software in 2010 for the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and also the PC. On the surface, this game may look like a lot of other modern shooters out there, but it's surprisingly cool because the game swings back and forth through time. So there's current day and then it swings back to the 1950s when a really powerful electromagnetic surge in the Soviet Union knocked out an American satellite. And so you are sent in to try to figure out what's going on. But in the meantime, you pick up what's called a time manipulation device. While searching for uranium on a tiny island off the southeast coast of the Soviet Union, Russian engineers discovered E-99. Now these Russians have developed this time manipulation device, which turns out to be really cool and very handy, but also pretty powerful. Essentially what it allows you to do is aim it at an object and either accelerate it or revert it in time. So for instance, if you run into like a bridge or something like that, that is sort of rusted or, and you, you, you can't pass it, well, you can revert it back to when it was brand new. Same thing can be done to enemies, which is pretty nasty. So you can take a, an enemy and revert them back to when they just didn't exist. And all sorts of other puzzle aspects of the game are thrown in using this device. For me, this game really reminded me of the original Bioshock. It just has that kind of a pacing to it. Um, also, the level design is very dense like Bioshock, very beautiful. So if you're a fan of that game, you should definitely check out this one and get it while it's cheap. I mean, this is not an expensive game. And now we get to what is quite possibly the best game on this list. And, you know, probably the definition of a forgotten gem. And that's a real shame because this game is awesome. And it's called Shogo Mobile Armor Division. This game is released by Monolith in 1998. Remember them from Blood back in the beginning? And this was the first game to use their brand new engine called Lithtech. Shogo has a lot of things that set it apart from other games. The most obvious one being is that it is influenced by Japanese anime like Gundam and Robotech, Pat Labor, Appleseed, but yet it's actually a Western developer. So it's, it's a Western take on all that stuff. It's kind of a love letter to Japanese anime. But beyond that, it actually feels like two separate games. In half of the game, you're playing as this 20-story mech. You're stomping around city streets. You see little tiny people running along the sidewalks and you can stomp them. You can kick cars and things like that. You just feel incredibly powerful. But then the other half of the game is on foot. So when you get out of your mech, then all of a sudden you're in corridors or you know, you're in office buildings and you feel really vulnerable. As a matter of fact, you can die sometimes in one shot. And so you go from feeling incredibly powerful to very paranoid. It's a really, really cool experience. And surprisingly, this game is laugh out loud funny. Some of the voice acting and the writing in this game is just hilarious. This is a fantastic game. Now, unfortunately, I never played the multiplayer, but people say that's awesome too. This is highly recommended. If you can find a copy somewhere, definitely snag it. I love this game. So that's part two of my series of forgotten first person shooters. I love the feedback I've been getting on these videos, so please comment below. But I do have a question for you. I'm really tempted to include some of the games that don't neatly fit in the genre, um, specifically in parts three and four. And I'm talking about games like Descent and Forsaken and those type of games where, where you're, not, you're not a soldier, you're not on foot, and maybe you're not holding traditional weapons. I don't know, I'd just be kind of curious to know what you think about that. I've got a lot of games that I can include in this series, so let me know what you think. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thanks for subscribing. Take care.